Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Venucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. So, Kenny. Yes, Phil. Today's episode is brought to us by Switch Grocery. Switch Grocery? Who's that, Mm -hmm. Phil? (laughs) Switch (laughs) Grocery is an online health food store. It's run by two really lovely people in Brian and Neha. Um, You'll find Neha on live all the time on social media, but um, they sell, uh, you know, low carb foods or keto foods and just generally products that are pretty amazing for your health um, on their online store. Well, Phil, I'm kidding you. I know who they are. (laughs) Neha (laughs) is a freak online. If you ever want to learn more about keto and the low carb diet, head to LinkedIn and watch Neha. She is out of control, hilarious. She's really good at what she does and she's so enthusiastic about her products. Um, they do carry uh, relatively unique products, stuff that you can't necessarily find in a lot of the mass chains or health food stores in Canada. A lot of stuff imported from the States. Uh, really cool products. Good pricing. Um, super fast service. Good good people. Good store. Do your shopping, baby. Do you want your keto and low carb? Switch your grocers. I think they can use that. We can give that one for free. I think we could give that to them for free. But... What we can also give you guys as well is if you want to check these guys out and you want to try some stuff out, um, there's a coupon code you can use called Switch Commerce Life. So Switch Commerce Life, um, and then get that gets you a discount on your order. And Phil, um, how do you find Switch Grocery? Where would you go? Well, I would go onto the World Wide Web, and the I internets. would go to the internets and I oh, would go, go I would go on the line and I would go to switchgrocer.com. Awesome. Thanks guys. Enjoy it. Take advantage of the promo code. You get a little bit of a discount. Cool products. Okay. Oh man. Um, okay. So you were at BC food and beverage last night. Yes, I was. How, how, how was, was that? It? Like, Yeah. Because we, we know uh, Alicia. We love Alicia. So she's I love amazing. Alicia too. She's, she's, yeah. such a, she's, she's such a sweet person. Um, I was there for a short time. Like I kept mm-hmm. short and sweet because I actually had to leave. So I was there for approximately, let's say, half an hour to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. But it was good. Lots of innovation. I've seen most of the awards uh, going out, which is very nice to see all the innovation and all the new brands and passion coming uh, out of uh, BC. So hopefully we'll be one of those next year. Never know. What was, was did you see? Yeah. Was there a trend or, or like, is it more getting more plant-based or what, what did, was, did you feel anything? Like, was there. Plant-based like, for sure. Plant-based obviously. For sure. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Plant-based it's for sure. everywhere. Uh, I've noticed a brand that. I am sorry, I don't remember the name of the brand, but they're um, dealing with seaweed, which is, and they're probably, and from what they've mentioned, they're one of the biggest uh, suppliers and producers in, in North America. And I'm like, wow, that's that's great. But lots of uh, plant-based uh, food on the beverage uh, section. Uh, I didn't get it because I actually had to, to leave. So. Right. So the seaweed, well, I wonder if it was Cove or Cascadia. Like Cascadia seaweed. Cove is the, yeah, the brand. Cascadia is we huge, had him on right? a podcast yeah. about a month ago. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. fascinating because I, I didn't realize there's all these species of seaweed. I didn't oh realize gosh. we were cultivating as much. They're they're working with uh, indigenous peoples all through the West Coast, mm-hmm. farms all over. Like I thought right. I thought it was fascinating. I thought, wow, it's I mean, think about a crop. You don't need water because it's in water. It's and better. It's even in salt water. I mean, you can't even use salt water on land. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's pretty fascinating that um, uh, the play they were looking at. And it's good for you. You know, it's loaded with nutrients. And I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. It is actually very cool. And it's really interesting to see where the foods um, innovation is leaning towards. To like a, a very good friend of mine, uh, she's the founder and CEO of uh, Yamasoi. Mm-hmm. And 
to be honest with you, I'm I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. Um, Nor are we. Nor are we. No. Um, yeah. I don't think I can live without cheese. To be honest with you, like I'm I'm Greek Italian, right? So excuse me, but I don't think I can live with without cheese, like Parmigiano or feta. Like that's in my plate pretty, pretty much every yeah. day. So when I was yeah. at the Planet Expo, I actually <clears throat> saw lots of interesting things, and I'm like, wow, that's like wow, that's 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 tasty. Yes. So since then. Um, I've been a customer for their brand and I've been purchasing some uh, other uh, vegan patties and burgers and, and yeah. stuff. I actually, so I don't do it because I don't want to eat meat, but I do it because I actually enjoy it. I think that's yeah. the trick though, Christoph. When we, when, we, when we talk to a lot of the plant-based sort of side, not side, people, whatever you want to call it, businesses, is because we're the same. We're not, we're, we're not vegan or vegetarian. I'm Italian too. I love my cheese. I'm not giving up cheese for anybody. Like if, if I have a gluten intolerant, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to gluten-free pasta. I have to quit pasta because the pasta comes from wheat for me. You know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's rules in my little world too. <laughs> Having said that, I've had, I've had the non-dairy cheeses. I've had some that to me were horrific and I've had some that are actually quite wonderful. I've had non-dairy uh, meat alternatives, or not, poor not non-dairy, non-meat uh, meat alternatives that like I the found protein, really, really good. Proteins, yeah. Like really good. Yeah. Like not a yeah. problem to eat it because it to me is just like, to what you said. It was just good food. I actually quite enjoyed it. So to me, that's what the trick is. It's not. I don't care what bucket you land in per se. I just want it to be good, which is similar to what, you know, we'll talk about you in a second, obviously, is what your products were. I liked your products is I just found them to be really good alternatives, bad choice of words for what they could be. That was, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you do that, what do I care what you're made out of? As long as it's clean, tasty, I'm good to go. I'll eat anything. That, it, is, that, is, that is very true. That it's very funny because Kenny and I were talking about this last night, but I'm looking forward to the day when these protein sub these protein sources these non-meat right like non-alcoholic like i would like to one day not have to say those things right like we're, we'll get into you know, you in a there. second what you do but i would i look forward to the day when there's no comparison it's just this is who we are and this is a freaking great tasting thing do you know what i mean like because in every alternative we make a comparison right it's always like well it's it's a it tastes like bacon but it's not bacon you know or it's you know turkey flavored or um you know but to me it's it's just it's it's a really great flavored protein that's what it is you know what i mean like so i look forward to the day when we we get there but um But it's probably a good place to introduce you, because uh, then we talk about your stuff and how delicious it is. Um, but we've got Christos on from Opus, and um, I, I, I'm doing the intro. But like Kenny met Christos at uh, at CHFA, at CHFA while I was at home uh, in bed, <clears throat> um, sick, and uh, couldn't stop talking about your drinks or um, what you were doing, and I couldn't say i couldn't ask him if he was drunk because clearly he was not um but he he'd spent he'd had a really good time drinking your drinks at, at the show so welcome to the show um we'd love to hear about you and your journey and how you got to opus um kind of the next 40 45 minutes is yours sir the floor is yours thank you so much for having me guys. <laughs> i really appreciate the invitation uh, I'm, I'm honored to be one of the very interesting people that you guys uh, interviewed so far, and you actually interviewed a few friends of mine as well, mm. like Alicia I mentioned before, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, from Nudes, um, who's a very good friend of mine, and I absolutely love and look up to. Um, it was, not it was, it is a very interesting and I'll say fulfilling but at the same time stressful journey so far uh, yeah um, I'll bet. but we we only see growth since since day one and we're pretty much a year in business like you can find opus 
available on the shelf as of end of August 2021. And now it's pretty much November 2022. Let's say it's a year and two months. Mm -hmm. And we are already in almost 1,000 locations across Canada. Wow. That's wow. craziness. Craziness. Um, take us back a little. So tell us about the journey that gets you to Opus. Yeah, tell us, tell us yeah. How, what, who you are and what, how did yeah. you get to this point? And then we'll dive right into the products. I yeah, thoroughly yeah, yeah. enjoyed them, thoroughly yeah. enjoyed them. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm Christos. I've been in Canada for approximately seven and a half, eight years, let's say. I just got my Canadian citizenship like two weeks ago. Yay, congratulations. Um, I'm the winner of the Global Competition of Cocktails twice. And a company that I used to work for brought me here from Europe uh, in order to do beverage development and formulation for them, as well as uh, be their brand ambassador and help them with their cocktail program. Um, so that was 2015. Fast forward, uh, COVID, which is February 2020. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right? it feels like a long time ago, but ugh. thank God. Um, I'm getting laid off from, from my work. Yeah. And thank God I have my other company in place that I do beverage development and formulation, which is called Speakeasy and Co. Um, and with this, we do beverage and uh, beverage formulation uh, and development for brands, breweries, distilleries and stuff. So a little bit back in 2019, 2000, I'm sorry, end of 2018, 2019, I was actually saying to my clients that, hey guys, the alcohol-free beverage segment for adults, it's going to explode because for us, in order to do beverage development, we have to live in 2025, we like it or not. We have to live in the future to see what's right. coming in order for us to give it to people. So. I was saying that, hey guys, alcohol free, it's coming. Every single one of my clients said, nah, that's not happening, man. That's, there is no point to do something like this. Like, why should I drink an alcohol free cocktail? I'm like, okay. So the same <laughs> thing, me behind the bar, right? Yeah. And I was bartending as well. Uh, I've mentioned people asking me, for stuff like, hey man, can you please make my soda look like a gin and tonic? Because they're <clears> going to make fun of me. And that thing keep, ha keeps happening like two mm. or three times a week. And I'm like, okay, there is, there is something definitely here. something yeah. here. Like that's what's actually proving the concept yeah. of what I'm seeing on the trend. So fast forward, COVID hits. I'm getting laid off from my full-time job. And I'm like, you know what? I'll do it for myself. Um, yeah. So you never um, kicked the idea. So the idea stayed. Like the, idea do this. Stayed, yeah. the idea stayed because when I do beverage development, like as an example, it might be 11 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and I might be buzzed. Not because I want to drink, but because I have to make sure that whatever I'm developing, it's tasting as it's supposed to taste, and I'm giving this to human beings. So I've got to make sure that right. that's okay to, to consume. Um, Sometimes I do that on weekends, but nobody seems to think that's okay at my house. If I start after breakfast and I start making a drink for friends that night, it just doesn't, I'm just joking, but <laughs> I get you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm, I'm not against alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol is uh, alcohol. Like the alcoholic world and the bar and the hospitality is what brought me to the point that I am yeah. today and, right. and made me who I am today. But I've seen lots of, lots of change on the consumer behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And that's because of COVID as well. Like when people saw, hey, I'm actually using hard alcohol to wipe my office or wipe the knobs on the door or wipe out things like sanitize things. And at the same time, lots of people overdid it with COVID as well. First, first, first couple of months for sure, right? First yeah, couple what else sure. do you I, have to I do? remember a Eat lot and of people, drink. But I was drink. one of them. I, you know what, yeah. you'd be online, your yeah. fourth call, it's 1130 in the morning, have a glass of wine or a beer, yeah. which we normally didn't do pre-COVID. Yeah. I mean, I, at least I did. I did post, like during COVID, I was one of those. Like I was having a beer or a glass of wine, like, seriously, 11, 1130, 12 o'clock, which normally I wouldn't do. So 
you're, you're home. Nobody's going to. Uh, exactly. I wasn't in the office. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, so I've knocked more than 50 doors to say, hey, guys, this is my project. Hey, guys, this mm -hmm. is my project. Hey, guys, this is what I want to do. Let's start to friends, uh, VCs, companies, a whole bunch of people that I thought that they might be able to help and invest and get the thing going. Uh, and from this pretty much 50 people, two said yes. We like the idea. We believe in you. We think that this is going to happen. You know what you're doing. You know your industry. So yeah, let's let's give it a shot. So the other 48 were not interested in, like, were, were, they, were they just not willing to um, accept that there was change coming or they just did not see? Like, tell me, because I guess what people need to understand, because we do know you a little bit, is so like you're you've been a bartender if i'm not mistaken for quite a few years right yes so a lot of your um intel or uh intuition is coming from real life circumstances mm -hmm. so you're bartending a couple nights a week i'm assuming and for years you've got men and women coming into the bar and not everybody is ordering a drink drink they want to drink something but not necessarily alcohol based some because may, who knows what the reasons are. They just don't want alcohol that night. Maybe they're designated driver. Uh, maybe they're expecting. I, I don't care what the issue is, but you saw a trend or, mm -hmm. or definitive need potentially in space like this. So the people you're talking to, are they in the same space as you? Like, or, like I'm trying to understand why only two of 50 uh, sort of understood what you were seeing. Do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I've been I've been behind the bar for pretty much 17 years now, right? Okay, so you've got some real life experience. Yeah, you've got yeah. And I've bartended and been behind bars pretty much all over the world, like okay. Greece, London, Italy, Spain, U.S., Canada. Okay, so uh, serious yeah. intel, not just intel. Yeah, yeah, in depth. Yeah. The people that actually reached out, they weren't necessarily from the hospitality okay. segment, but they were people that I know that. Not okay. that they're wealthy, but people that I know that they invest and they're active right. Right. in the business community, right? Okay. And some of them, they were um, liquor store chains owners as well. Okay. Which, by the way, liquor stores are our second biggest channel across Canada as we speak. For you? For So non-alcoholic non in an alcoholic outlet. Yeah. Okay, fascinating. Okay. Um, so from this pretty much 50 people that I reached out to said yes. And I personally got a big loan in order for me to right. be able to start what I started as well. So as people say, I went into that thing like balls dip. Um, and we started from selling two cases with last month sold 2,500 cases. So we went from two cases to pretty much 23 pallets. In, in a tight period of time too, right? We're not wow. talking 20 years, we're talking like a year and a bit. A year and two months-ish. Yes. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. That's so, amazing. Christoph, before we get off that, just I just want to explore yeah. this a little deeper because I think we have a lot of people who are, um, just starting up who listen or, you know, in their first year or two. And it's sort of, um, I'm trying to get, the, I'm trying to get to the, to people to understand that you had 50 people you talked to 48, basically tell you not interested. Right. But you still persevered. Like you obviously felt that there was something here. If you don't mind me asking, like what was some of the resistance or what were they saying um, as, as to reasons why this, I don't know, didn't make sense or whatever. And why you persisted? I don't want to. I don't want to swear, but the podcast you can do whatever you want. <laughs> like I remember the very first people. So the very first person that I actually pitched the idea yeah. is a person that they reached out to my other business to speak his and co. Yeah. To do beverage development for them, and I'm like, hey guys, you know what? I would love 
to do some memory development for you, but I cannot because I'm developing this for myself. Because with Opus, yes, we're 100% alcohol free, zero calories, zero sugar, made out of real spices and herbs. But we did a limited edition alcoholic right. uh, version as well. Mm-hmm. So when the thing is gone, it's gone. Um, so when I had this, this conversation with these people, I'm like, hey, guys, I would love to help you, but I cannot because I'm developing my own thing. And they were like, okay, yeah, show us what you have. And we might be able to, instead of us developing our own, get mm-hmm. into yours. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we signed NDAs and everything. Um, and when we sat down, uh, I... Like I always don't say people which one is the alcoholic and which one is the alcohol free. So they tried both. They were like, oh, yeah, we like both gin and tonics. We like both spirits because we started with the spirits and the gin and tonic. Right. And I'm like, guys, one of these is alcohol free. I want you to tell me which one. And they were like, it's alcohol free. I'm like, yeah, it's alcohol free. And they were like, why do you want to put an alcohol free cocktail in a can? Because this is what's happening. This is how I see the market moving forward. Mm-hmm. There's a segment that it's being untapped. The, like specifically with this one, sky's the limit. You don't have to deal with BCL licensing. You can put it in anywhere. 7-Eleven can take it. Between, right? And For sure. I'm like, my focus, it's going to be 98% on the alcohol free, 2% on the alcohol. And right. they're like, I'm fucking done. This is not going to work. We don't believe in this. Thank you, Christos, but no. I'm like, okay, so same conversation with lots of people. So one, they were like, we don't believe in the segment. The other one was like, there is no point of me drinking alcohol-free cocktail. If I want a cocktail, I'll go to BCL or LCBO, get my alcohol, ta-da. The other one was, why should I drink something which it's technically a pop? And I'm like, it's not a pop because it's zero sugar, zero calories, and it's made out of hydrosol. And they were like, hydrosol? What's hydrosol? Mm -hmm. So um when we do events and stuff like people were like oh wow that's that tastes like a gin and tonic but i'm like it doesn't taste like a gin and tonic it is a gin it and is tonic. a gin and tonic it is a gin and tonic because we actually make hydrosol and hydrosol like when you have as an example two cups one cup of vodka and one cup of water right and then you put exactly the same tea bag in both cups the cup with alcohol is going to absorb 97, 95 to 97% of the actual flavor from the tea leaves. Mm-hmm. But the water, it's only going to absorb seven. So in order for us to get that intensity of the alcoholic one, we use three and sometimes four times the spices to actually get the same flavor. Mm-hmm. So it is a gin and tonic, but it's alcohol free. Mm-hmm. But you also uh, had people, so you had, sorry, Christoph. So you got people, yeah. the first guy tries both yeah. and says, wow, these are really good gin and tonics and just drinks them, doesn't say anything. Why, I guess, because I've had your product, right? I had it at the show and I like, so I like gin and tonics. I had the gin and tonic. To me, it was a gin and tonic. Th- that's what, that's what it tasted exactly like what a gin and tonic would taste like. What is the difference? I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to understand people's mentality that, you enjoyed it. They didn't know they were drinking alcohol free until you said, Hey, by the way, one of these is alcohol free. Like why the mindset change when you've just enjoyed two gin and tonics, one alcohol, one non-alcohol. I'm trying to understand the mentality of these people. I'll tell you a a real life example. So we Mm -hmm. were in one of Vancouver biggest events. Um, at the um, P and E horse racing. Yeah. Thing here in, in Vancouver, and we were there with uh, with an office um, booth, but we only did alcohol free. So we had a guy that he came to our booth, and he's like, "What you guys have? Like, we have gin and tonic, spritz, spritz Bellini." He's like, "Gin and tonic, I'll take it." So he took the gin and tonic. 15, 20 minutes after, he came and he got another one, and he heard one of our ambassadors being behind the brand, uh, behind the booth saying, alcohol free. He's like, alcohol free? What the fuck? I didn't know that this was alcohol free. That's bullshit. I'm like, you had one can, (laughs) you came back and you purchased a second can and now you just discovered that this- And you're angry about this. (laughs) 
Like, you only have two cans of that thing, buddy. Yes, okay, it's alcohol free. You didn't maybe you didn't hear that thing at the first pitch, but we say with big letters on the brand on the uh, yeah. band, banners behind it's alcohol free. Yeah, yeah. Like we, say, yeah. we say specifically alcohol free, never tasted so good. So, which is actually true. And I'm like, okay, okay. Is it I'll maybe it's just that. a maybe it's just a social norm like it the the like kind of my my world and my example is like you know my my 20 year old they just don't drink like his whole group of friends like they, they've started drinking now my 25 they're, year old doesn't drink his yeah, friends don't it's either just not a, it's not it's not a it's not a thing. way of life for them right like we we grew up drinking i remember having my first beer, like sneaking out for a beer, you know, at 12, 13 or whatever the number is somewhere in there. Right. Um, my parents don't listen to this podcast anyway, so it's fine, but, um, you know what I mean? Like, so I remember doing that as a kid and alcohol was a big thing for us, but these guys, they don't, they don't, they don't care. care. Like it's, I, maybe Not it's a generational them, it's thing, it's right? A different like, thing. It's definitely different. Yeah. Um, from my perspective so far, yeah. Gen Z, it's not that big on alcohol. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. that big on weed either. No. I've seen tobacco. Yeah. It's our no. generation that keeps screwing everything up. <laughs> we drink too much, we smoke too They're much. Vaping, we're like... <laughs> What's that? They're big on vaping. Like the vaping. Yeah. 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 Which yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, it's not yeah. not a great solution or alternative, no. but that's a whole yeah. different podcast. I've seen big, like not big, I've seen huge incorporations like pulling putting billions of dollars into the yeah. um THC C B D yeah, beverage yeah, yeah. 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 And honestly, I I like and this is my opinion, right? Like I don't see that as I don't see it either. I don't see that as, as a goal. Like Personally, I don't mm-hmm. consume cannabis. I don't enjoy the feeling. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not a consumer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but a few of my friends, they, they smoke weed. Yeah. And <clears throat> like when we all like get together, like I'm having my beer or wine or something, but I don't partake. Like that's not my thing. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like personally, right? Like, and, and from from my experience, like. I don't see like somebody who enjoys smoking weed cracking a can with one of his friends and he's like, okay, we'll try, we're going to drink that CBD THC gin, gin and tonic and get high in 45 minutes from now. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Like, I, I, think, I might be off, yeah. but we're I don't think they're off. I'm not convinced. I, 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 think, I think we're, I think we're, to me, what's really interesting about what you're doing is, is we've leaned in. I think particularly with the pandemic is we've all become in a lot of ways become better eaters, right? Because you realize how many things you can make at home, what things could taste like. And I think that's leveled up the experience. So what I feel like, what I think is most interesting to me about what you do is you've got this wonderful tasting drink that is all about the taste. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you don't get the, maybe I'm, getting into your marketing pitch but i feel like you don't get any of the the side effects of alcohol so i don't walk away drunk i don't walk away intoxicated but i get it's almost like having a really nice meal you right? will enjoy the drink filled without yeah. the side effects correct correct no correct, if that's correct, if correct. the side effects christos is like thanks for, a lot the marketing pitch is done yeah. but if the side <laughs> effects are what you're looking for you can have a gin and tonic yeah, yeah that's you, up you to can, you yeah 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 but if yeah. you def if you enjoy gin and tonic but you don't need or don't want the alcohol this is yeah an alternative it's not close it is the alternative yeah 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 this is one of my favorite let's say debates like because sometimes, like as an example, um, first week of October, because for Sober October, we did pop-up alcohol-free uh, bars with office across Canada. And oh, wow. I started with the very first one in Jacks on Granville, uh, because this is actually one of our busiest um, liquor yeah. stores yeah. across Canada. So I had one um, one gentleman came to the booth. I'm like, hey, my friend, you want to try alcohol-free gin and tonic? Da, da, da. This is um, sober October. We're celebrating. We're starting this. This is our biggest liquor store. Da, da, da. I do all the pitch. And he's like, alcohol, fridge, and tonic. What's the point? 
I'm like, hey, this is my favorite question because when I lay out to people like all the reasons, they were like, aha. Uh -huh. So I'm like, how many times you were at a party, you didn't want to drink and your friends were making fun of you. He's like, yeah. Where you were on a medication and you wanted to have a gin and tonic or a margarita or something and you couldn't consume alcohol because you were on antibiotics. He's like, uh-huh. You are in a Sunday barbecue and you drove to a friend's house and you have the family with you, but you really want to have a beer or a gin and tonic, but you have to drive your family back. Aren't you going to have an alcohol free gin and tonic? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here you go. She's like, yeah, now I get it. Exactly. It's not rocket science, right? Because at the end of the day, like, let's say that you go to a restaurant, right? And you don't want to have alcohol. What's your options? Juice, water. pop, water, soda. That's it. Coffee tea. Coffee tea, yeah. Coffee yeah. tea. Yeah, you know what I mean? But you really, you're, you're not. No. The thing is, my, my background, like I started as a barista and then I was a coffee roaster, right? Mm -hmm. But as much as I love coffee and I do all the ritual, like I make my espresso every single day. Um, but the thing is, even if you go to a bar and you're like, okay, I'm going to have an espresso martini. You know what? You're going to have one. Right. Yeah. You're not going to have a done. second martini. No. Okay. No. Even if it's a second espresso martini, you're not going to have a third. No. No, and yeah. that's from my personal experience being behind the bar and actually creating beverages and cocktails for people. I think culturally too, Crystal. I, I think like some of some cultures, like the ones we come from, for sure, um, are more um, like I like a bitter type of drink potentially before I, before I eat. Like so, I'll have a Negroni. I'll have I can have a gin and tonic. I'll do a bitter. I'll do something before I eat because. To, you know, you cleanse the palate a little bit and, and you get ready to enjoy a nice meal. But there are times like in restaurants where there's, it's, it's, you know, it's a shitty rainy night, like in Vancouver today. I really don't, I, I can't, I, it's harder for me to see at night as it is, you know, as you'll, you know, I don't need the alcohol, but I still enjoy the flavors and the taste to help me enjoy my meal that much more. Like, that's why like, I don't, I enjoy a glass of wine while I'm eating. I enjoy a bitter before. I enjoy a, a post uh, a meal cocktail or drink. Do you know what I mean? So, but you can't do three drinks if I'm going to the restaurant and I'm driving. It's not, it's not sensical anymore. It's, it's and I think the, and to your point, I don't want a glass of water. That, that's not going to do it for me. And I'm not going to have a coffee before my steak. I'm not, I, I, it's not, it's not the same. And, and a cranberry and soda is a nice color alternative, but it's not the flavor I'm looking for. That is very true. That is very true. Specifically when you go out for, for a nice dinner, you actually go out, not just to eat, but to go out for the experience. The experience, yeah. the whole thing. And, yeah. and a, a alcohol or a drink can be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so um, fascinating why you got so much resistance, but that's okay. That's Yeah, a that is. Uh, okay, so, weird, so what but... happens? So you, so you get you get support. Finally, then, out of two people. Yeah, so you got out of two people. So you, so you get support. What do you like? What happens then? Like, do you know, uh, what drink do you make first? I was going to ask you, like, did you already go? have drinks in your head? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or like, did you say, oh, I got to now come up with yeah. something? So we started with gin and tonic, and we started with uh, the aperitivo spritz as well, which is the two, let's say, so as you see the flavor wheel, right? That is, bitter, sweet, salty, umami. Um, if we take the umami out, most of the people, they're leaning into bitter and sweet, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, we're going to start with the gin and tonic to cover mm -hmm. this aspect. Right. And then we're going to start with uh, the aperitivo spritz, which is the other side, uh, which is the, um, uh, the citrusy one. Right. right? Mm -hmm. like, you see what's happening on the global beverage consumption. Number one is water. Number two is coffee. Number three is orange juice, and then you take it from there, right? So, right. I'm, okay, we're gonna start with the with the spritz, uh, which is the um, the sweeter kind of bitter sweet, uh, but sweet aftertaste um, beverage, and that way we cover the whole flavor well. Right. And we launched the peach bellini, which is just in the middle. It's a little bit more on the sweet side, and we have new things coming out very very soon. So how long did you go with 
gin and tonic and the spritzer until you started adding more flavors? We start, okay, so we are officially on the shelf, right? Mm -hmm. Being able, like you being able to go to the store, purchase a, a gin and tonic or a spritz as of end of August last year. Okay. So we started with these two SKUs. Okay. And then last May, we started with the Peach Bellini as well. Okay. Yeah, I saw that too. That's really cool. Okay. So That's like really a sort cool. of a, a, a citrusy, which could be a sweet sour, right? And then you get into a bitter. Mm -hmm. And then a Bellini is probably leaning a little more to sweet. So you're, sweet. you're really trying yeah. to, and I'm assuming at this point, you're capturing um, men, women, doesn't really matter, pretty much gender neutral. Drinks go back and forth. I mean, you always get teased. People do whatever they do. But so you're covering all aspects of people. Your age group, I'm assuming what, 25, 40, 25, 35, 25, 55? What are you? Like, what, what, what are you, are you, or can you even see what you're, who you're? It's interesting that you mentioned that because we started with alcohol free in mind, like when we built like our consumer's profile, right? right. We were like, okay, this mm -hmm. is probably um, if a, an, an active female that she just finished her spin class and mm -hmm. she just wants to have a nice gin and tonic or a nice apple spritz, but she doesn't want to have the alcohol. Right. But it turns out that we were completely wrong because there is lots of men supporting the brand as well. And that's for number one, I want to be healthy. Number two, I want to perform in my personal life, gym, etc. And number three, for mental wellness as well. Okay, makes sense. Um, and the age group, I'll say that it's approximately 28 to 55 ish. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's interesting, right? Because it's almost like you've made a drink, but you're also fixing some societal, <laughs> you're, you're right sizing societal stereotypes at the same time, right? Like, you know, if you, I, I, I remember growing up and thinking, I don't want to, like, even if it's out of fun and a, a good group of guys to hang out with, I don't want to be made fun of, right? So maybe Not I get a drink. Plays, right? Yeah, like maybe I get a drink and I hold it all night and I sip it, whatever. But, but it's always like you, you feel pressure. But in this case, this is, this is the real thing, right? Which is really cool. I, I really, I, I love, I love this. Like I, I love kind of the I, the market you've gone after. It'll be I wish, yeah. I yeah. love it too. I wish the vegan community. I, it's okay, I'm going to be. I'm going to pick on the vegan community at this moment. I wish they would sort of do more of what you're talking about. There are people out there doing it that are not trying to make a chicken or a beef. They're just trying to make a really good alternative to to whatever. So whether it's the cheese, like we talked about at the beginning, give me a non dairy cheese. You don't have. I, I just make it taste like a good cheese. Dairy or non-dairy, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy good yeah. cheese. And I yeah. think that's why I, when I stopped your booth and why I really asked you to come on, when I tried it, I thought, Jesus Christ, I didn't think Aaron at CHFA and Lindsay would, were going to open it up to alcohol. I find that fascinating. That's pretty cool. It's the only alcohol guy I've seen in the show. I don't know why there's only one alcohol guy because you think if we've opened it up to alcohol, there'd be like 10, 15 guys. And as I'm drinking your drink, and I think it was you or it could have been your assistant saying, alcohol, I'm thinking, what what yeah because this actually this tastes yeah. like a good gin and tonic and i'm thinking yeah. oh okay and again, he was pretty I'm not, excited. i don't care like i was when, really excited when he because, came back that night he was really excited I told like Phil, I said, even for a sick guy i was like okay i got it i, I said, got it he, i got it He's i said coming this on is the show. actually really good <laughs> like, <laughs> well because i found it yeah i i always love the ones at the show where i walk away and i, I like we had uh, when we talked to um what's his name at tomorrow foods it just mm -hmm. tasted good. Yeah. I didn't give a shit what it was made out of per se, as long as it's clean. I just wanted it to taste like it good. I really enjoyed yeah, your, you your don't, drink. You don't want to settle for yours. things, right? Like that's the yeah. I don't want to see big cocktail. Pandemic. I'm not into mock yeah. cocktails, and yeah. I think that's probably the resistance you get from a lot of people is that I don't want a mock cocktail. That's not what you're pitching. What you're telling people is I'm going to give you the cocktail. The real I'm just going to take out yeah. the alcohol. You don't need yeah. the alcohol to make this a really good cocktail. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying to people, like what I used to say to people, like when I was doing spirit education for 
for the brands that I was working for. I'm like, you don't drink to get drunk. You drink to enjoy the moment. So by the time that you understand that and you digest that, mm -hmm. you're going to completely change the way that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And I was giving them a very, a very vibrant um, example that I've seen it multiple times. You're obviously going to start drinking from home because when you go out, alcohol is expensive. Yes. Right? And when you're pretty much done with partying this, that, the other, you might go out and you smoke a joint as well. So 15, 20 minutes after, you're going to be on the corner cooking the shit out of you. And the next day, you're going to feel sick and you say to yourself, oh, my God, I'm never going to do I'm that. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> so you don't drink to get drunk. You drink to enjoy the moment. And by yeah. the time that you understand that, you're going to completely change the way that you're drinking. Yeah. So this is when Opus comes in and we say that we can give you an actual real handcrafted cocktail, which is zero calories, zero sugar, gluten-free, no preservatives, no sketchy stuff in there that it, that it actually tastes like a gin and tonic because it is a gin and tonic mm -hmm. or a yeah. spritz or whatever this thing might be. Interesting. That's the, that's the part. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a gin and tonic. It is just without the alcohol. It is exactly. a gin and tonic, though. Bottom line, it is what it is. And I think that's sort of the, the, the trick that anybody playing in the alternative two space, right, is I think that's where the miss – I think that's why there's a lot of vegan food out there that is so shitty, to be honest with you, is because they're trying to make it like something as opposed to just be like the what it is. Do you know what I'm trying to get at? Like – you can't fake it. Like if you tried to make a gin and tonic and just farted around with it and tried to tweak the sugar and this and that, it's just going to taste like a sugary kind of sort it's of. Taste like a a gin and tonic. It's, it's, it's going to taste like a mocktail. It's going to taste like a mocktail. And I think but that's you, the perception people the have. You made the actual yeah. real thing yeah. since alcohol. I love it. I love with with Pubis, we have we have more stuff coming out moving forward. Are you going to um, share any of that, or is that going to be like top secret? We got to wait. We got to have you back on, or what? Secret. I would love, I would love to share, <laughs> but I'm honestly going to make 100 percent sure that before we launch it, I'm going to send you guys some some samples. So, oh, oh Chris, Christos that. has a marketing person in the next room going, <laughs> "Don't, Shh, don't say a word." No, no, not yet. <laughs> um, I'm not, we have we have a new flavor coming out soon, a new a new cocktail expression coming out soon, and at the same time, let's say that Opus is the tree. We have another branch of Opus coming out. Very soon. good, fascinating. Listen, let's do this. When you launch, send us some, and we'll get together and we'll have drinks together. I'm hundred percent down. Oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah, that would, would be awesome because then we get a chance to try it. We get a chance to talk about it. Maybe we'll help you, you know, promo the product a little bit, and it gives you a chance to be able to actually debut the product properly as well. I just think you're. So, I think what you're doing I, I think, is important, yeah. Crystal. I, and yeah. I think I think all of you people who are playing in alternative spaces, yeah. like the less meat we eat as a society, yeah. it's not going to hurt for us. us. Yeah. The better for us, better for the planet. Yeah. I think there's enough studies recently even coming back out that now even doctors are saying a drink a week it, like they're just really recommending you stay away from alcohol is really mm -hmm. what is coming down which mm -hmm. is going to be very hard culturally from for you and i mm -hmm. our cultures do enjoy um you know aperitivos and they do enjoy uh wines at dinner and they're really suggesting that we really start to pull back from alcohol consumption in general we know we shouldn't smoke and i don't care what you smoke any ingesting of of shit into your lungs is not good long term whether it's vaping whether it's dope whether it's tobacco so we have to get smarter as, as a as a species and try trying to take care of ourselves. But I don't want to give up on the indulgences I like or that I enjoy the taste of. And I think that's where I, where I really appreciated your product and you is because you gave me that, which is I like. So I'm happy that you're doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I honestly really appreciate that. And it's very it's very fulfilling and it's it's very satisfying to to see the um, the help and the feedback and people reaching out to us and saying hey guys thank you so much for what you've created uh, I'm an AA and I really love what you guys oh, that's amazing do yeah. with us. fantastic but at yeah. the same time, 
we got emails from people that were like, oh, I'm an AA and what you do is very offending. Well, I've, I've understood that even if you sell a bottle of water, somebody's going to complain. You can but never- You're never gonna win everybody and that's not yeah, even worth a try. Anybody, but me as Christos, I, I personally got lots of help to get to the point that I am today. So I'm trying to give back and help and support as much as I can. So that's why for each box of Opus, we're committed to plant a tree. Good. And we just did a collaboration with uh, a Vancouver local ice cream company called Duno Gelato. So we took the peach bellini and we transformed it into an ice cream. And oh, all the sales from this it. went towards Canucks uh, Autism Network. So oh, awesome. Wow. Um, um, on, on my end, I'm trying to do my part as much as I can, not because I have to, but because I want to, and I feel that I got lots of help. It's time for me to give back. That's amazing. Myself. Good for you. Really? That's amazing. Good for you. Good for you. Christos, thanks for coming on. This is amazing. Thank you very much for having yeah. me guys. I really appreciate yeah. it. And I'll hold you on the new flavor. No, nah, for sure. Oh, 100%. 100%. You you launch, you, you shoot us a note. We'll set up a time. You know what? We'll set up a time. We'll do a 10 yeah. minute quickie, like a YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. walk us through it. Tell us what yeah. you've designed, what you've made, and we'll have yeah. a, a nice little we'll have a drink, a, a drink together. together. It'd be, be good. awesome. Absolutely. Christos, Christos, if people want to get a hold of mm -hmm. you and or your product, what's the best way to find you or the product or or both, whatever? Products, uh, drinkopus.com, and at the same time on social media, in all social media, we are, uh, our handle is Drink uh, Opus. Yeah. Um, myself on LinkedIn, uh, Christos Kalaitzis. Um, you're definitely gonna see me in most of the events. If I'm not traveling, I'm at the events because I wanna make sure that I meet the people and I get the feedback, I get real-time mm -hmm. feedback, mm -hmm. right? Um, and yeah, if you think that we can help somehow, or if there is anything that we can do, reach out to us. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Christos. Okay, buddy boy, you go enjoy the you. shitty weather we're having yeah. in Vancouver. And fill stay, your stick on, and we'll stay finish dry. Up. Try to stay yeah. dry. You're on the North Shore, man. Just <laughs> try to stay. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Okay. My pleasure. Take care, Take care my friend. Bye. We'll chat with you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Bill, stick around. Thanks, guys. Okay. My pleasure, buddy. Thanks. Ciao. Very cool. That was cool. Very cool. He's got a cool product. I mean, I know I, I couldn't shut up about it when we got when I got home from CHFA because, you know, I really do enjoy gin and tonics. I, I really do. I really, I, I just, I love the taste of, um, I just love the taste, right? And I did find that I, I didn't, I, I actually thought they had opened up the store to alcohol, uh, the show to alcohol. Right, which I thought, wow, it's a health show. I mean, okay, I mean, it was a little dicey, but you know, Aaron's bright guy, you know, legit. I like they yeah. can figure it out. He's usually doing lot. something smart. Yeah, okay. so you you know, go. I guess I guess they figured yeah. something that I have. He figured something smart out that we hadn't thought of yet. So, and yeah, then yeah. when he comes up and no alcohol, like, all righty oh, then. This is this is okay. Yeah. This yeah. is okay. I'm, That's I'm awesome. I, I, I can do this. I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to trying it. I, I think. I think you. Really I think cool. you will. I mean, I've probably oversold yeah. it now because I can't shut up about it, but. I think you will enjoy it. I do. No, no, I really think you no, no. I, I don't think so. I think you and I have pretty similar tastes. We don't yeah. miss on a lot of things. No. Um. So yeah. yeah no, I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed yeah. it. It's awesome. Oh, awesome, yeah. dude. buddy. I'm gonna have to swim down to uh, yeah, Grotta or to the, the store, one of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening, everybody.